Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Katawa Shoujo. This is episode, what, I don't know, 10? 9? Somewhere around there. Hopefully I'm right. Okay, so let's uh, reload it. So, what happened ep- last episode was we bumped into Emmy, who was the, um, the girl with the, her, you know, the, the metal legs, the prosthetic legs, and we were walking back to class with, um, what was both her names? Uh, Lily and, um, what was her name? Hanako, yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and read this area this here. Let's start. <sighs> okay. The classroom closest to ours was detonated along the classes 3 1 and 3 2 on the right side and 3 4 on the left side, each door looking exactly the same. Further down the corridor, still with identical doors, are rooms that I didn't think were used for classes. I guess our room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept or not in use. Am I in the right place? Desks and chairs are all around the room. A thin layer of dust settled on them. There are some easel... Oh, okay. Uh, uh, For some reason, my mind just went blank with there. There are some easels in the corner, so at least this looks like the right place. You know those things, those wooden things you set up look like a... Kind of like a... Like a pyramid. Not a pyramid, like a triangle arc shaped up. And you put your, you start painting on it. I don't know. Hopefully you guys get what I'm trying to explain. The room is flushed in sunlight from the big windows, shadows creeping all over the desks. Specks of dust are dancing on the stagnant air, making the beams of light almost visible. Jokingly, I call it, I call into the empty room. Anybody hope? Something catches my eye and I stop mid-sentence. Sitting on a desk is a short-haired girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform with a fork between her toes, a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. This odd way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands, but her presence here is what takes me back even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in the corner very still, but I still somehow took her as part of the furnishing or statue at the first glance. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of missing a whole bunch of stuff. A girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her huge eyes like a rabbit in headlights. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. I'm staring at her, my mouth wide open, suddenly remembering I can't- I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird stalemate keeps us- keeps us both stunned in silence, punctuated only by the wall clocking- (sighs) Punctuated only by the wall tick- by the clock ticking rhythmically. Hello. The girl stuffs the fork ma- forkful in her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly while chewing. This is a bit awkward. Um, hello. I think I was told to pick up some supplies from here for some festival skill- styles, I think. I didn't think that were- there would be someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here too. She picks up another forkful. Doesn't that mean you're here then? She raises her eyebrows as if she was unexpected. It's expecting my obser- observation was false. You are pretty observant. I guess it does. But who are you? This girl is pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm Nakai. He's sound Nakai. I just transferred in on Monday. I'm Rin. Tezuka Rin. Rin Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are. <laughs> well, she, she's using... She's, she does know that she has no hands. Of course. She's using it as a, you know, a way to cope with it using comedic stuff. I kind of like that. It's very nice. Her deadpan manner of taking, talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothers me, joking about these matters don't feel... Joking about these matters doesn't feel appropriate at all. Well, I'm trying to figure what's appropriate and whether this girl is... She seems to have lost interest in me and is now gazing yearningly back at her food. <laughs> Can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind me, I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are in the back. Go right ahead, but... Lunch? School's already over for the day. What word would you use then? Yes, there is no word for a meal you eat after lunch, but before dinner, right? It bothers me very much too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you are supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. But I'm hungry now, and my delicious l- box lunch would go to waste otherwise. I have curry. It's very delicious. With this much decisiveness, Rin once again picks up a fork between her toes, and with at least as much impoliteness, she points it straight at me. (laughs) Heh. 
So Nakai, what brings you to this place? Like I said, I was told to go look for these things. No, the school. From outside, you look fine. Is your problem inside? I come to a full stop, opening my mouth but not getting a word out. I... I guess... I can guess. I'm a good guess... Good at guessing. Better than most people. Rin cuts me off before I can answer the question, or screwed around it somehow. I don't know which I would would have done. I froze in front of the issue again. I haven't even told anyone here about my condition. Or maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that not making an issue of this is part of the so- social code here, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here could re- relate. Probably not any better than any normal person would. Could. <laughs> I can't relate to Shizna's circumstances or Lily's either. Naturally, while I go through this in my head, Lillian keeps considering what my condition could be, with an over- overtly contemplative look on her face. Contemplative look on her face. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer is, was written up there. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of darkness shadow on the other side. I don't think it's anything in your head, and something in your guts would be boringly ordinary, like this lunch of mine. And less delicious. The problem must be in your pants. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, she just went there, of course. This messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement with a sheer lack of tact it was delivered with, with catches me completely off guard. I think I might have reeled back even physically as Rin eyes widened revelation and astonishment. So I was right? There's something wrong with your tact. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so I was right? There's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? Oh my gosh, still partially in shock but recognizing the need to reply something, I spit out the first thing that I can think of. No, nothing like that. I have a heart problem. Arrhythmia. Oh, she doesn't believe me. I said it. More like blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me pushes purses her lips together and glowers at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in the pants would have been much more scandalous. What's with this reaction? Oh, what's with this reaction? I'm sorry to let you down. I forgive you. Just as... Just... I collect people and, with, and a person with... Wait. I forgive you. Just... I collect people and a person with... You know, that kind of problem. Would have been really great. Collect people? People with different problems. Huh. So you just, like... Go around asking people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. <laughs> With little left to say, then resumes her lunch and the conversation dies away. But I keep thinking about what was said. It's the first time I told anyone else about my condition. All the other people have either known about it already or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it, like every other student here so far. So I should. So I have told it as a natural part of introductions. Is, is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Sihisao. Sao. I have a very serious heart condition. <laughs> Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would define us? What a disgusting thought. Or maybe this Tezuka girl just has an unnatural interest in such things. I have to walk back to the room to pick up the items on Misha's list. A chance opens to study Rin from the corner of my eye. Her hair is burnt auburn, almost orange and cropped short. Long hair would probably be impossible with no arms. The boy's uniform and the lock of arms make her look very thin, almost scrawny. She is not particularly pretty except her murky green eyes which flicker restlessly from below her short bangs even when she eats. The distance and the shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all but instead absorb all of it within them like deep wells. She moves her feet almost as definitely as a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see how this sight could discomfort people, especially while eating. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable at least. I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? I keep searching the cabins and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable, so I try to force something, some conversation out of this girl, strange girl. So, do you always eat alone and this late, or do you get the occasional visitor? Visitors? Maybe you are my first occasional visitor, but I always... But I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat with a certain person on the roof, and she's not horsing around. Horsing? She's like she likes to do sports. Oh. And that's all I can think and that's all I can think of to say. 
Both of us fall silent again as Lin forks the last bit of her meal into her mouth. I look down at my hall and double check it with Misha's list. It seems I have everything except plywood. Um, so I think I have all the things now. That's very nice for you. Don't feel obliged to stay. I was about to take a nap anyway. You need to do whatever you're going to do with the stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you like to watch girls. Oh gosh, you like to watch girls sleeping. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of this, but Lin looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. I, I'll catch you around, Tezuka. You can call me Lin. I feel that our relationship is at a point good enough to warrant this much. I was already turning to. Oh, I was already turning to make an exit, but she draws me back in. Fine, then I'm Hisao. Then, then you are. Lin looks at me hard in the eyes, but that in intimidating feeling when you get when so someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, and I can't figure out why a pause, why a pause like this just popped between us out of nowhere. See you later, Hisao. There's something like a tiny smile there in her face, maybe. I quietly back out of the room. <clears throat> As I shut the door in front of my face, I whispered to myself. What an intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that... Ah! Uh, what, what did she hear? I jumped at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I had not heard approaching despite that completely empty hallway. Someone she had got... Wait. Someone she had gone to jumping distance of me without making a sound, creeping it briefly reminds me of Kenji's nutty theory about global feminist conspiracy, but I pushed that thought aside. Oh, they're both here. Shizune standing slightly behind Misha looks aloof as, she's, as she couldn't have heard that remark that drew Misha's attention, but Misha is very is visibly excited. No, wait. More importantly, who is in there? There's no club meetings today. She tries to curiously peek past me even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. W what are you doing here? You took so long that we had to come check what's wrong. That's no good, Hichan. She wags her finger at me scoldingly. Scoldingly. I found plywood, but everything else is missing. Still missing because you are tardy. Oh, sorry. Um, I got things here. Was just going to bring them back. I think you were up to some mischief, Hichan. Who was in there with you? I wonder. Misha signed something quickly to Shizune, pointing at her own ear a couple of times. Oh, she's going to look in there. Shizune immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door to the classroom I just left. I can only imagine the shock she is experiencing. With Shizune's dil dil <sighs> With Shizune's diligence in a ta ad Oh gosh. Okay. No okay. Come on, brain, you can do it. With Shizune's diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to Wow, that's just so much high vocabulary. The insolence of daring to def deface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. And indeed, she stares out in, frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders from suppressed rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, Shizune just takes a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, turning to sign fiercely at Misha. Oh gosh, maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me as if somehow my fault that Rin's sleeping on one of the tables. I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason of my tiredness. Oh gosh. Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door and it takes a few eye blinks to realize she might have trouble opening it. I open the door to find Rin directly behind it, looking at us with half interested, half sleepy face. Hello? Oh gosh, she's, in there. <laughs> she's like, what the heck, what are you doing, Isao? I went in there and I saw her laying there asleep and you were in there awfully a long time so come on explain <laughs> i guess you know, that's what she's that's what she's going through her mind right now miss tetsuka what do you think you were doing you absolutely are not permitted to use school property for such a er, disgraceful activity oh gosh she misha even thinks so too it sure is suddenly very crowded in here i don't know how is this popular it's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events at any rate, she ignores Shizuna, Misha's scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizuna taps Misha's shoulders, points at Rin, and makes some quick signs. Oh, popularity aside, please don't do it that anymore. What, what, what's, go what's going on, guys? Anyway, how is the project going? Will it be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under the pressure Shizuna's cold stare is putting her back. 
putting on her. I keep wondering about that myself too. No, oh, I keep wondering about that myself too. In? We'll think about it harder. As Misha sighs her reply to Susan that her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. Huh. Miss Tetsuka, please try to take this seriously. It would be a disaster if the wall looks like someone threw up on their lunch onto it. Oh, come on. Lin nods uh, assertively. We'll think more seriously. Misha actually giggles at that, but Shizuna doesn't. Not even after translation. Well, Shizuna is. Well, she is the class representative. She just shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off with Misha in tow. Lin frowns thoughtfully as she looks after the retreating student council duo. How rude. It's true, though. I must finish my project before the weekend. There will be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like, weekends usually are, but more dire. Much more dire. Maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. Huh. I'm about to ask what project she has. Yeah, I was about to say that. I was like, what kind of project is she? Something to do with... I don't know. Well, sh I don't know. Well, guess what to find out later. I'm about to ask what the project she has and what are these apoc apocalyptic consequences when she walks back into the art classroom. Since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? This paint... Oh, she's an artist? This paint can doesn't fit into my bag, but I need it. She kicks lightly at a huge can of paint that is lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting on. While she was sitting... <laughs> she wasn't sitting on a paint of can. That would be intense. There's like a paint can. It's tiny, small. On the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on. It lets out a dog, dull cling. Being the gentleman I am, I'll try. <laughs> really, he's out. Being the gentle I am, I naturally pick it up. Heavy. Yeah, sure. Where do you need to take it? Away. <laughs> and with that, she takes off into the hallway in the paint can, following since there is no choice for either of us. The hallway is quiet and empty now, with Shizuna and Misha gone, so we two lead towards the st wait. So we two lead towards the stairwell at the other end. Every 10 or 15 or 20 steps, I have to change the can from one hand to the other because the thin handle cuts into my palm. Oh yeah, that kind of, you know, the f fatigue of carrying a heavy paint can. You always got to do the practical switch. <laughs> At least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. Then strolls on beside me with an uneven pace that I even have trouble matching. Or maybe I am walking weird because of the extra weight. It seems one of us is constantly walking too slow or too fast, and I can't figure out which. Two flights of stairs below, Trouble appears in front in the form of the head nurse and his fox-like grin. Oh gosh, this guy. Ah, Mr. Nakai, we're in a coincidence. Tezuka too, of course. He nods courteously, courteously to Din, who, doesn't, who does not acknowledge him back, then turns to me because obviously it's me who he has some business with. <clears throat> There's something I forgot to mention on Monday. I nod and wait impassively because I can't even begin to guess what he forgot. The feeling of the handle delving deeper into my skin doesn't make my doesn't make me feel enthusiastic about the interruption either. It's about your medications. Since you haven't been that long on your current medications, there might be some unexpected side effects which might require adjusting dosages or even changing to another kind of medication. Ugh! So we will do a few tests regardingly, regularly. But what I want for you is to keep an eye on everything in your condition that feels off, if you get what I mean. Nausea, headache, headache? Wow, really? Headache? Nausea, headache, anything, and come see me if something happens. All right. So how are you? Everything fine? Oh gosh, look at his eyes. What? Well, I don't know. I <laughs> I give up and drop the can to the floor before answering him. Apparently, his takes this takes longer than my biceps can handle. I'm about to say something generic as an answer, but then I realize how often I've done that lately. Other people have asked me that too, teachers and students here, parents, visitors, nurses, doctors at the hospital. Oh gosh, it's just going all out then. Everyone seems to be concerned about what about that. It's natural for a hospital, not so much for a school. Except this school. <laughs> yeah. This is a small school, and both the student base and the facility seems to be very tightly knit. At least that's the feeling I'm getting. 
And this is not the kind of school that gets transfer students too often. The thought sends shivers up my spine, but I give a generic answer anyway. That's great. <laughs> he just stood there silently like, Really? You ask me that question? That's great. Also, one other thing. My sources tell me that you've been at neither the school track or even the pool. So I'd like to know if you have been taken up. So I'd like to know if you have taken up exercising as, as I asked. Of course I haven't, but this, but his way of inquiring gives me the feeling that I should have been running off, running my ass off, on the track since the very first day. You have people spying on me? Not as such. I just happen to know a few people, but that's not the issue here. So don't try to slip out of it. Well, I was actually just doing some improvised whiff lifting. Wait, whiff lifting? Whiff lift? Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> I was just actually, well, I was actually just doing some improvised weightlifting as an exercise. Oh, I just need to really work on my emphasis. Jeez. I picked up and lift the can up and down a few times like some sad imitation of a bodybuilder. Even though it's weighing down on my arms painfully. The stupid grin disappears from his face for a second, then comes back like it was never gone. Tezuka, would you give us a second? Oh, serious talk now. The nurse grabs me by the shoulder without waiting for Rin's permission, which he didn't need in the first place, and drags me aside. When I told you to exercise, I wasn't joking. Oh, I understand that you are still on your first week, Anal, but please don't ignore the importance of this. The reason I'm coming down this hard on you is that the, ha the habits is that habits are not easy to form. The more you slip and postpone, the harder it'll be. It's the same for everything, like dieting. Can you promise me? To be more serious from this now on? Oh gosh. Oh, I'm gonna save it. I'm not gonna risk it. Let's let's save it. Okay, let's save it. Click on that one. Yes, save it. All right. Progress can successfully. Yes. Let's save it. Another one. And let's make a new save spot. Just in case. You know, just just in case I don't miss anything. Okay. Let's. Uh, is it on there? Okay. Good. It's on there. Just making sure. Okay. Let's say, maybe, um, looks like our character doesn't seem to, like, like the idea about, you know, weightlift, weightlifting and stuff like that, exercising, like, I mean, of course it's important for him, he knows it's important, but he doesn't like the idea that they're trying to push on him to make him do it every single day, like, really, a, like a hardcore training, I don't know. Let's say, maybe, or, I don't know, let's go with, can you promise? Oh, this is, uh, let's say yes. Yeah, I promise, definitely. He studies me for a moment and then shrugs, smiling again. Okay, that's more like it. If you go to the school track tomorrow morning, you'll meet my spy who probably has no qualms offering consultation to you if you want to jog a bit. Consultation? See you around. Okay, he just ditched us. He leaves with a wave of his hand and no answer. Yeah, he just like kind of walked off with, without us answering back. <clears throat> and I walked to Rin, who has been waiting, idly leaning against the hallway wall and staring at the pile of lightning fixtures in the ceiling. Even when I approach, she doesn't move her eyes off them. Are you getting medications for your heart thingy? Were you listening? It comes out more accustory. Wait. Accusatory. Uh... Accused. It comes out more accusatory than I intended, accidentally lashing out on her. But even so, I didn't really want to start talking about it. I just met her. I don't know her. It's not her business. The nurse seems to be happily ignorant about confidentiality, too, talking about that kind of thing in public. But it's not Rin's fault. It is it. I look up at her, suddenly feeling a bit guilty, but Rin is just staring past my shoulders, quizzically, her head tilted like a bird's. <clears throat> <sighs> I don't know why this is so hard for me. It feels like there's some inexplicable look that prevents me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, therefore my heart. Will they make you better? No, not really. It just makes... They just make me a little less worse. Ben keeps looking at me f for a while longer, and she neither says anything further nor displays any kind of emotion I could discern. I'm thankful, I'm thankful that she doesn't... Wait, I'm thankful that she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all of this. At the hospital, it was easy, but I still haven't stored 
sorted my feelings about having to live a normal life with that disability. And we are going to leave it here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Because I actually kind of like that character, um, Rin. She seems like a very cool person. She has kind of like that um, joking aspect of her and her personality when she's like, So you like to, you know, watch girls sleeping, I guess. You can watch me sleep if you want. And he's like, and, <laughs> and he's now is like, oh, I don't know how to answer that. That's kind of a, a weird question to, and kind of an awkward thing to ask. But uh, yeah. Like a favorite you guys enjoyed. I'm the LexCon Gamer, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.